so many great things that happen in our community. I want to talk about three things that we've been able to accomplish in terms of reducing poverty and then three things that we need to keep in mind in terms of advocacy moving forward. Uh, the first thing, of course, is the CRA. You cannot overstate the impact of the South Side CRA that is created. Uh, for the first time in the county's history, we have dedicated county funding and city funding specifically to reduce poverty in South St. Pete. That turns around the county's policy previously that said we would only uh, contribute in downtown areas. The Pier and the Mahaffey, those were funded by a CRA. And the county had never funded a CRA to address poverty. The 16th Street CRA, the Tangerine CRA, never received a dime of county funding. Mm -hmm. That was the county policy. We will not invest the 49th Street CRA, no county funding. This is the first time the county has ever funded a CRA specifically to address poverty. And it is 60 It's a $60 million commitment over the next 30 years. And we have built a strong, strong foundation to deal with poverty. If you're building a house, this is just the foundation. We still have to build a house. And this is a 30-year project. And this is not about streetscaping and landscaping. We have to empower the people in South St. Pete to get a job or to get a better job. It's not just about bringing in jobs that those folks cannot access. And that has to be our focus moving forward. We've also, for the first time, put in a citizen's, citizen's advisory uh, committee, and several of them are here today. If you're on the CAC, would you please just raise your hand? And the reason that we put this in place is because we wanted community involvement as these projects come forward. Now, just a, a week or so, the city council approved the first 10 categories um, for funding. Now, money from the CRA is already coming in. $500,000 is coming in this year. But I advocated along with Council Member Nurse and some others that there was not enough money in there to train folks to get jobs now. And so we've got to continue to focus on that and focus on what that CRA was really all about. All about. But it is a big change uh, in Pinellas County. Just to give you an example, I told you what the county's previous policy was. It would only invest in downtowns. Downtown Clearwater, downtown Largo, downtown St. Now our priority is funding poverty reduction programs. The city of St. Pete Beach came to our meeting yesterday and asked for $70 million in a CRA and a TIF for downtown St. Pete Beach. And they were identifying slum and blight as not having enough parking. <laughs> but that's the way it's been done in this county for years. Our county commission yesterday, and you can watch it on our streaming video, said, you know what? We are committed to poverty reduction in South St. Pete in Lelman, in Greenwood, in High Point, and in Tarpon Springs. That is our priority. And so come back to us. Come back to us with a different plan. And that is a change that you have made through your advocacy. The County Commission has totally changed how we will address poverty through our CRAs. The second issue uh, is homelessness. I want to touch on that briefly. Uh, homelessness disproportionately affects the black community. And one of the fastest growing areas of homelessness are families with children. One of the programs that I'm very proud of is our Family Housing Assistance Program that helps families with children get into housing, but also provides them the wraparound services so they can stay in that housing, whether it's counseling or other wraparound services. Our manager for that program and her team are here today, Amanda Lampley, if you would. You have your team members here? And I, how many families have you helped move into housing? I, don't want to say the number of Since 2014, we've helped at least 95 families. Thank you. Southside CRA, there's 38 families in the Southside CRA. Thank you. <coughs> Another thing that we have done is we have, like the city of St. Pete, we've banned the box on applications for employment with the county. Yeah. Too many people, when they make that application, they have to sign off and say, I'm at four minutes already have to say that you have a conviction, and that throws those folks right out of the, the possibility of getting a job. We ban the box. That box is no longer on the We also have to a living wage. In this year's budget, every county employee now will make at least $12.50 an hour. We also were able to uh, work with the sheriff and the clerk of the court. They participated as well, so 50 employees in the county have been moved up to 12.50 an hour. Now the advocacy piece. 
What we want to do next, and we're going to need your support, is to incentivize every contractor that does business with the county to also pay a living wage. Right. It makes no sense for us to incentivize folks paying less than a living wage if you're doing business with the county. For example, we just signed a contract with the security firm. They won because they had a low bid. They had the low bid because they were paying less than twelve fifty an hour. That makes no sense. So we want to change that. We're going to need your support uh, and advocacy for that. Uh, the last two issues is entrepreneurship and helping build businesses in our community. The Tampa Bay Black Business Investment Corporation is working and doing a great job. Albert Lee is here. Okay, brother. Uh, we're going to help build businesses and entrepreneurship in our community. And so we're going to ask for $75,000 to help support that. I was going to wait until next year's budget to do that, but we need that money uh, earlier rather than later. There will be an issue coming to the county commission asking for $350,000 for a ferry, which I support, but a ferry to go from Hillsborough to Pinellas County uh, under the definition of economic development. And we're going to try to access our BP oil money to do that. I'm going to ask it also in the interest of economic development that we add this $75,000 to that so that we can support black business development in St. South St. Pete. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I'll support and the next issue before I take my seat and Pastor Murphy hit on it, there is disproportionate uh, impact from law enforcement in our community. And it's particularly arrests for minor uh, drug offenses yes. and other minor arrests that gets on someone's record and then they cannot get a job. In many cases, they can't get education. We've been working with the sheriff for this on a while, for a while. The city of St. Pete has asked us to look at civil citations for marijuana. We're gonna expand that to look at other minor offenses so that we don't simply arrest and re-arrest people for minor violations and put that permanent spot on their record. We're gonna have more diversion, and that is gonna to come to the county commission in April for a workshop. We need you to support civil citations. So that's what we're working on quickly. Thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you, Commissioner Walter. Before Nikki comes on, or as she's coming on, uh, we want to acknowledge Amy Foster, the chair of city council. Mm -hmm. Right. I won't even need my full five minutes. I just want to briefly go over um, some of the Urban Affairs Impact Report. Everyone has a few at their table. We're in the process of reprinting this document. Uh, we had one or two changes that we needed to make, but I want to specifically go into some of what Pastor Murphy mentioned about intentionality. We have to be very intentional about making an impact. And in 2006, I'm so glad Ms. Gwen talked about that because back then I was a business owner and I understood the importance of feeling like I was kind of on an island. And I knew how important the BBIC was because I didn't necessarily have that when I was a business owner. So we have to be super intentional about how we can have an impact right now. So that's why under the urban affairs agenda, so much of what we're doing is focused on poverty. We have to make sure that we address that. So I know some of you have them at your table, but I just want to briefly talk about how in the last two years what we've done is to be intentional about having that impact around opportunity creation. And so of course we heard early, uh, Deborah talked about the youth employment piece, and we've been working with 2020 in, a in addition to all of the youth employment providers with the city of St. Petersburg to increase that. And I'm sure that Councilman Nurse will talk about this a little bit more. But that increase in the fiscal budget this year, we are so excited about the impact that we'll have to increase you jobs. Because we know that has an impact. And we know how important it is because CETA, style, <laughs> all of us, many of us are youth employment babies. And it was our ground to have an opportunity for us to start learning what's important in the corporate environment professional brand that many of us have right now, we can attribute to teachers like Ms. Pashera Faulkner. Yeah. So we understand how important this is and how it can have an impact on our youth, and we got to continue to be intentional about that. So thank you for saying that, Pastor. Perk, we are so excited. I know Mike Gelazzo's in the room. Mike, if you would stand up. We want to make sure that folks know how 16th Street 
corridor is changing, and we are so excited to be working with PERC because we all need second chances. Let's just make it, let's keep it real now. Ex-offenders are the ones who got caught. How many of us didn't get caught? <laughs> okay? But 
this is a little bit as the glass, half full or half empty. And if you if you see this one, you'll see this is full of, of blue dots, which are which this is the CRA area. And the blue dots represent foreclosed properties. The red dots represent boarded properties. The the uh, yellow yellow lots are, are, are land that's empty. And what you'll see is that we've got lots of all of those. Uh, hundreds and hundreds of them. So that's one way to look at it. But let me, but let me, let me, let me give you the other end. If you, if you see, you see the green here? These are all properties that are owned by the people who live in those houses. And there are thousands and thousands of people in Midtown and Childs Park who own their houses. And the reason that's relevant is that in most communities in this country, 90% of the wealth that people own are in their houses. Well, the African American community was, was impacted negatively more than any other community in the country by the recession because their wealth was cut in, in, in many, of these, many of these houses by as much as three quarters. And so the, that, is the, that is the reason that it is so important that we take that first map and reduce the number of foreclosed properties, reduce the number of boarded properties and the vacant land so that you get the, you get the bottom values, <coughs> which are as little as three or $4,000 a lot, up enough so that the people who own their houses, actually, you know, their, their wealth can double, in some cases triple, and it provides the opportunity for people to be able to access capital to, to, to improve their properties. That, is, that happens to be the fastest way to improve the wealth in, in the African American community. And that's, that's one of the reasons why I work on that so much. I should let you know that we just got a grant to ramp up the kind of work that the Urban League and uh, POC is doing for what's, what's being described as financial empowerment. Uh, in uh, New York City, Bloomberg started this, and this is really where it's growing in a big way. And the goal is to, is to have thousands of people go through, through training where they, they, they increase their skills from basic budgeting all the way, in some cases, to home ownership. But, but you see, historically, the city has really just paid to help people buy houses. Well, particularly after this wreckage that we've been through, there are thousands and thousands of people that, uh, that, that need budgeting, that need, that need access to, to a checking account, need to be in a place to be able to get to a place where they can get legitimate credit so that you no longer have to buy here, repo here, you know, you know, rent to own and all the rest of the uh, payday loans, all those rest of those ripoffs that, that, that effectively lower people's standard of living. And so, uh, the mayor and, and, and some of the staff, and I think myself, will be going in, 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 in April to, a, to a, uh, an event with seven other cities as we begin to ramp up a two-year process of this. And the city is prepared to put skin into that game. So I think that's a way that we can 